live in. Uh, if it's in China, uh, Kalento's word is final. Kalento's word is final, but can he have the first say in this series? You like that transition? Mm. Priest versus Mech Mage. Now, I was told by some pretty reliable sources uh, that Priest, statistically, one of its best matchups is Mech Mage. Even though it doesn't feel like it'd be the go-to counter, he'd always consider some other classes, but uh, according to uh, some reputable sources, okay. Priest is one of the best classes against Mech Mage, mm -hmm. specifically. No, I would say it depends where you get your reputable sources from. Pretty reputable. Okay, some uh, maybe some uh, metagame insiders, perhaps. Um, <laughs> Anonymous metagame insiders? No, I, I mean more... People even beyond that. I mean, I, that, I mean, you know, anonymous meta, meta insider is pretty high up there, but I would say about five tiers above that. Okay, I see. Um, well, of course, if the priest draws like uh, Kalento is drawing right now, I would say priest does have a very sizable advantage in this matchup. Arcanine Circle. I mean, what more can you ask for, really? And following that up, even with the uh, with the Sludge Belcher. Yeah, I, you got to put out that Shrink Meister just to grab any semblance of board control early on. Uh, and then, I guess you just play it mm -hmm. turn by turn here. And it's unfortunate that the Cogmaster would trade up, but that's sort of what you're expecting anyways. Oh, is he going to coin out the Frostbolt? That's interesting. Yeah, um, I definitely like playing the uh, Clockwork Gnome here because it sets up for a possible turn for Gamma and Blast Mage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure about the Frostbolt, though. Hmm. This seems like a pretty good trade, I would say. Um, and you do have follow-ups. I guess uh, you do want to be aggressive here. I don't know. It's close either way, I'd say. It was Blizzard, by the way. Blizzard told me. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't know that? I did not know okay, that. You th who did you think I was talking about? Um, like I don't know. Like Raynad? <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man. sir. Dad, I, I like you how... You are quite the jester. I like uh, how you're always so self-deprecating about your own <laughs> team. It's very refreshing. Oh, Raynad, no one thinks about the metagame. All right, mm -hmm. well, you know, do you want to take this opportunity to build an Injured Blade Master? No, he just chooses to heal. He's going to go for that Alcanized Soul Priest clear, or yeah. maybe let it build up a little bit more. I think he just wants to be greedy. Uh, he knows that he has a very nice board clear in the following turn, but um, Green Memory is able to play around that by just playing a secret. That's too bad. Now it becomes a little bit even more awkward. Yeah. Um, Green Memory, of course, he had the option to just go for the Mad Scientist, but yeah, I like this a lot better, actually. So now how does Clento deal with this? Because if he... He still has to deal with the 3-1 uh, the, the, the that will survive off the Alcanist Soul Priest. Mm -hmm. Still not as bad as it could be, though. I mean, if he wants to give like an injured blade master over. Yeah, I mean, you always have uh, a second Alcanized Soul Priest, mm -hmm. which you can use to ping down your opponent's Alcanized Soul Priest in the following turn. That's true. This also kind of uh, stifles your opponent's uh, next turn. He'll probably be forced to hero power uh, and spend oh, two of his. Yeah, mana. but he's at least he has something to do. A mad scientist. Oh, time rewinder. He can actually heal oh. his uh, Alcanized Soul Priest at a, yeah. at a later point in the game. Or, you know, just uh, use it on like something like a go the Goblin Blast Mage and destroy mm -hmm. souls. Yeah, Goblin Blast Mage, I would say, is probably almost the best card in this entire deck. I mean, a 5-4. I think you'd actually rather have a 5-4 um, in this deck than a 4-5. Plus, it has like basically arcane missiles attached onto it. So, that's essentially about 5 mana worth of stuff into a 4 mana minion. Of course, it's uh, kind of has a... Has an activator effect. You have to have a mech on the field, but right. when you build a deck around it, mech mage, of course, um, I'm sure you'll you'll have here's, some way to activate. Here's it. the thing, monk. Would you consider uh, avenging wrath an okay card? I would say it's. I've seen it played a bit on ladder. Mm -hmm. I would say I wouldn't say it's over the top, but I would say it's at least average. How about for three more mana, you summon a five four? Because that's what happens when you put Goblin Blast and Mage plus Timer Wire together. Wow. I had not thought of that. that. Seems Don't pretty good. Me, monk. Seems pretty good. All right, here we go. Uh, Blast Mage three times to the Sludge Belcher. I guess uh, he wanted to see the results first before he did anything else. But as mm -hmm. a result, looks like he 
overkilled or missed the damage here by doing so. But mm -hmm. of course, he could have easily gone forward to the face and uh, regretted everything about his life. This is still fine, though. And uh, Kalento, I mean, he might be uh, running into the problem where he might be running out of cards in the future. He does have the North Tower of Cleric, which I think yeah. out of all the cards in his hand is the most important right yeah, now. Pretty clutch. I mean, his hand. He has room to heal and Shadow Word Death. That's actually so big. Mm -hmm. That is really big because, like you said, the card count is really important. So that way you can continue to mm -hmm. uh, control the board effectively. And there's also a point where he's going to have to also heal himself <laughs> to stay out of range of burst finishers, mm -hmm. like the fireballs. And we talked a bit about the Time Winder before, and I oh, okay. think that might have been the... Uh, Actually, the worst spare part he could have gotten because right. if he's in a situation where he doesn't have any minions on the board and he has to play Antonius plus Time Wonder, he could be in a difficult position. I, I, I think uh, this is pretty clever that Kalento was um, playing the Injured Blade Master. Mm -hmm. I th was that a reevaluation because he drew Holy Nova? So that way he can Holy Nova next turn and then. You know, I think even if he didn't draw Holy Nova, he. He would have played the Injured Blade yeah, Master. I like that. Um, okay. You've seen already seen a Frostbolt from the, the Mage player. You also. Um, you, so you basically can say that this, there's a very high likelihood that this Blade Master will survive the next turn. Well, yeah, definitely. Well, Recombobulator, wow. I so, mean. <clears throat> if you play Recombobulator, I would have to say that you probably play Shadow Madness in this deck. Right, for sure. Mm -hmm. The Shadow Man, and because well, you have Shrink Meister, Shadow Madness combinations, and then of course you have the uh, the Recombobulator mm -hmm. for for Mince Day. What are you feeling there, Monk? Uh, drawing a card with the Holy Nova, or just dropping Holy Nova and healing the Injured Blade Master to four seven? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the inside scoop, Arena? Let's see if you. I, I like just healing because next turn you can draw the um, the Northshire Cleric and make mm. your opponent just have a Northshire Cleric. Um, otherwise, you'd have to play the Recombobulator. Wow, um, really just not Into going the Mirror coming. Entity. So only one type of secret in this mage deck, and it's going to be Mirror Entity. Yep. Okay, so he's going for this right now. Yep. Um, oh yeah, I forgot that he can just trade in. Yeah, that's that's better. So we saw Kalento use a Shadow Word Death before, and unfortunately he doesn't have one right now. So quite a bit of trouble with this uh, Dr. Boo on the board. He has no real way to deal with it. So he's going to probably have to heal and hope to draw his second Shadow Word Death. Yeah, but he's got a stall, so there's that. <laughs> and he can draw a card as well, finally. Ah, uh, that's not great. You know, in these kind of situations where you're top decking, uh, Wild Pyromancer is kind of one of the worst uh, cards in your deck. And I think that's one of the reasons the Chinese players, they've kind of gone in a different direction with Priest. Uh, less around the combo nature of Priest and more for like, board control. So it kind of plays more like a Paladin or a Shaman, as opposed to like a standard uh, control Priest. That's a good observation. Fireball. So he's getting closer to the end here of maybe being able to burn his opponent out. Mm -hmm. Mm, now, you saw your opponent mm. didn't have an answer for Dr. Boom last turn. So maybe you can just uh, return it to your hand and heal so it up. So you kill off that and then you play Antonitis and return Dr. Boom back? Yeah. Uh, because he probably didn't have, he didn't, definitely didn't have a Shadow Word Death on the previous turn. Right. You probably know that he doesn't have one on this turn. So it's going to be, again, very difficult for him to deal with this. Still uh, out Antonitis. of mind control range, too. Exactly. I think you definitely have to play this Antonius on this turn. You just collect a lot of damage too, because you have a third fireball in the deck, mm -hmm. and then uh, another frostbolt. So, well, not a third fireball. Sorry, a third effective fireball after you you get one from the Antonitis. Um, from also from Green Memory's perspective, Kalento actually can't deal with the uh, the Antonitis that will come on the field. So yet another reason for Antonitis. Well, uh, yeah, he'll have six damage. You're right. Yeah. Oh, and there we go. I think Dr. Boom will be uh, making a quick return to Green Memory's hand. And what's better than one Dr. Boom, two Dr. Booms in the same game? Well, it's like 1.5 Dr. Booms. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. But that still is better than one Dr. Boom. Yeah. Objectively speaking. Alright, so uh, he can kill off this Antonitis, which he absolutely has to do. Um... The issue he has to deal with is that if he kills off this Antonius with his uh, 
current board. Actually, because he drew the, a spell, he can actually kill the Antonius plus um, leave the Blade Master alive plus draw a card. Nice. Um, he gave up the Power Word Shield, unfortunately, but he does uh, draw another spell. Um, he plays Akanai, so that means he's he, gonna use the Hero yeah. Power down yeah. instead. So unfortunately, not gonna be able to draw a card. That's fine. I think uh, this is sort of like having another card anyways that the Injured Blade Master stays alive, mm -hmm. as opposed to having a car uh, card in your hand you have one put directly in play. So I, mm -hmm. I like that more for board pressure. Problem is, now he can't really heal. Exactly, exactly. Um, so there's no incentive necessarily for Mage to let the Arcanite die if he draws more burn. In fact, Monk, what happens if he draws like the Frostbolt? Does he just shoot both to the face? Like all, both spells to the face and just let it go? Well, I think uh, I think uh, this is kind of like shooting both spells to the face. I mean, if you, I think you still <laughs> you think about shooting his own boom bot. Oh no, man, I, I don't think that's correct. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I mean, if you just keep shooting to the face, honestly, with your um, with your hero power, you, you pretty much win in four turns, right? Yeah, fair enough. So if these boom bots do any damage to the face, it could be just game over. Fix up second holy nova. That'd be pretty big. Oh, light of the Naru. Naru. nuke damage. Oh man, uh, you can get rid of Doctor Boom with your uh, "quote unquote" nuke yeah. damage, but I guess you I have thought steal first, right? Oh. Might as well. Oh, you know what? Actually, um, you can actually recombobulator his uh, Akanai Soul Priest and then heal. Oh, you're right. That is cool. But you want to use Light of the Naru first mm -hmm. before that, so it's damage. Unless you want to heal out of range, but I don't think. Uh, I think what Kalento is going to do is he's going to. Uh, keep the Soul Priest as a Soul Priest until he uh, decides he really needs to heal. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is a... Depending on where the Boom Bots go, yeah. I don't think this is a turn where he needs to heal right now. Okay, so Thought Steal after trading in. Good sequencing. Mm -hmm. uh, a mana Worm. Alright. I okay. guess it fits the, the bill for the turn's mana curve. So if Mana Worm's in this deck, there's a high probability that Unstable Portal is also in this deck. Right. It's kind of a version that 6-0 has used in tournaments yeah. before. Unstable Portal Mech Mage. So he's running out of time. He's running out of space to breathe, but he's still in it. Mm -hmm. It's very important for him right now to actually uh, leave some space for the Recombobulators just so that he can... Uh, Okay. Just so, so, just so that he can recombobulate. Oh! oh man, you know these. Kalento just got outskilled. These boosts are pretty soundproof, but not that soundproof. I think Kalento could definitely hear the screams of wow. all the Chinese fans, and wow, there it is. Kalento lo loses the first game. So. Green memory. That was that was one for the ages. I don't think Kalento will forget that. So that was basically a, a oh. one in one in twenty eight. Oh, <laughs> one yeah, in 20. The, the one in the one in seven and the one in four. Mm. Well, actually, I think uh, he had ten mana on that turn, so it was actually the one in fourteen. Right, right, or, right, yeah. right. Just one. I think after a game like that, uh, you probably want to take a breather as well. So we have uh, our next match, and Kalento will be the one playing Mech Mage. He's seen how strong that deck was in the last match, and he's like, well, why don't I give this a try? Don't blame him. Mm -hmm. And wow, we see uh, Leopard Gnome and Web Spinner in the Hunter's opening hand. Now, we actually saw um, Leopard Gnome in a more mid-range deck in the last, uh, by the last Chinese player. So mm -hmm. again, uh, this deck has Dr. Boom, but it also has Leopard Gnome. Yeah, that's interesting. Lepernome is a pretty curious choice, just considering that there's no Undertaker synergy anymore. Yeah, I think maybe what the Chinese players I did. Oh, we were better uh, than this, Monk, <laughs> than to play Lepernomes and Hunter. Uh, apparently not. Imagine if Ninja were here. Uh, he'd I be making, we grew up, Monk. He'd be making so many Lepernome jokes. I really thought we were on the cusp of esports, but we still play Lepernomes and, and Hunter. Mm. It's too bad, man. It's yeah. too bad. So, but on uh, a serious note, uh, Leopard Gnome's pretty, pretty dang annoying. Mm. I, I think it's actually really good in this matchup as well, because yeah. uh, oftentimes you are racing, and Leopard Gnome is uh, one of the best racing cards. Pretty much, it's, it's pretty much like four damage, essentially. For one mana, which... Mm. I, th I remember when um, Aggressive Hunter first came out, uh, one of the, the thoughts was about stacking damage per mana crystal. 
So it'd be like, if example, if you did one mana or one damage per mana crystal, how many turns would it take for you to end the game? And mm -hmm. the estimation is about six or seven. And the rationale was to put every single charger in, like Wolf mm -hmm. Rider, Arcane Golem, yeah. uh, Bluegill Warrior. It actually works out that uh, right. Bluegill Warrior is two mana, it does two damage. Wolf Rider is two mana, it does three, 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 mana, three mana, yeah. it does three, three damage. Right. So. Yeah, essentially, it is, uh, again, hero power, two damage for uh, two mana. So essentially, it is one right. uh, point of damage for every and, single uh, mana. They, and then, the, the, of course, the big wild card to like change everything was cards like Lepernome and Leroy. Because, <laughs> which is funny because Leroy's a legendary and Lepernome's a common. But Lepernome, if it does four damage, like you were really far ahead in the race. Mm -hmm. Oh, we see actually a really important card in this matchup for Kalento, which is the Inuitron. It's not as important against mid-range Hunter, but in a... In a Matchup where racing is very frequent, a Neurotron mm -hmm. will be uh, very useful later into the game. Sometimes I hear players actually like to hold a Neurotron for when they really need it. Whereas if you just played a Neurotron right now, it might run into an explosive trap and you might not get the full value out of it. Right. Mm. How about Blast Mage? It's 4 to the face. Yeah, not bad. Um... Okay. Unless he just wants to play a Noyotron now. Well, he can play the uh, the one drop and the three drop now. Okay, that's true. That fills out the mana curve. Yeah, I like that. Just that, you know, I, I, I know, like you said, it's a race, but I'm personally afraid of taking too much damage. I think uh, I think at, at, at Kalento's mindset is that he has to be aggressive right now yeah. in order to race his opponent. And then when he's about to die, he needs to play a bit more defensively. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So playing I the mean, more ag aggressive cards right. like in the Tinker Tower division and the. Uh, this puts Cockburn out more Rome. stats than the Goblin Blast Mage. Yeah, exactly. Now you kind of want to get a juggle off, but if you play the Knife Juggler first, you give your opponent uh, a Knife Juggler instead of a Web Spinner. Ooh, you're right. So give I him a Web Spinner instead. I think now Kill Command would be pretty nice. It leaves it pretty awkward mana wise. Mm -hmm. oh, and what's so annoying too is that, like a second freezing trap, not only is it uh, not po proc from the mad scientist, so mad scientist has less to grab, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, there's a web spinner out there which can easily pop it up. Yeah. I think the, the key combo in this matchup from the so hunter side is he, he really needs that unleash the hounds. And if he gives up this knife juggler right now and plays it just as a, a 3 2 and he draws the Unleash the Hounds, he's going to have uh, one of his comeback potentials pr uh, pretty much erased from the game. Mm -hmm. Alright, looks like uh, he's got to make his decision quick. I think Kill Command, you're right, yeah. is the important thing. You can't be taking that much damage per turn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, even if you wow. Knife Juggler, it's just so easy for your opponent to deal with it. Like, there's so many options. Frostbolt, Goblin Blast Mage, I mean, he can't see Kalento's hand right now, but he has to suspect that at least one of them is in his hand. You're really afraid of taking that much damage. So we have two finicky co-fields in uh, Kalento's hand, so if Archmage is drawn, it's pretty much game over. Wow, I didn't even know the full name of that card. Mm -hmm. Are you are you not impressed? I am very impressed, Monk. You know, like I said, you know this game a lot better than I do. Ooh. Garzilla! Oh, but oh, Kalento man. got the Bloodfin Raptor. So I I think uh, I think Green Memory is screwed. <laughs> The blood Sorry, I couldn't raptor. even finish that one without without laughing. <clears throat> um, wow, nice juggle. Nice um, aim, bro. And wow, uh, green memory is actually n not looking too bad. I mean, Grazilla is actually very threatening for a mage. Grazilla pretty much locks out Goblin Blast Mage as a card that you can play onto the board, right? Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. You're so right. Okay, but he's oh, going he to use it now. now. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If, assuming it was out in, 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 in a vacuum. Uh -huh. Oh, Ooh, that's terrible. Nice. Oh, that's terrible? Well, terrible for the Hunter player. Oh, I was like, that's terrible. But uh, I would say that might be one of the best possibilities. Like, you kill the you kill the Knife Juggler. Uh, you kill the Knife Juggler first, mm -hmm. first of all. And you don't kill the, the Spiders um, before the Knife Juggler. Yeah. Plus, you don't even kill the Spiders. So, less yeah. power on the, the, the least amount of power possible for the Hunter. And... Um, yeah, it's basically, again, the, the board has swinged yet once again. Here's how you do non-biased casting, Monk. You have to cheer for every player who's on turn it is. Okay, okay. So, like, if Kalento's making the play, then you're like, oh, that's awesome. But if you say, oh, that's that sucks for uh, another guy, it seems like you're cheering for another person instead. Because you're I diminishing see. the skill.
that's being demonstrated right before your very eyes. So it's just like, like that card right there, the Glaive Zuga, you're diminishing the skill needed to draw that. I see. So like uh it's kinda like tennis, right? Where you have to cheer for the winners and not the, the losers. You know when they Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you don't you don't cheer when someone makes an error in tennis, right? You cheer when they they slam the winners down. Mm. Rodan giving uh yeah. casting lessons for those of you who are interested. Or we could just cheer for our teammates. That's, that's normally what mm. regular casters do. You mean cheering for our European teammates? Because after all, we are Europeans, right? Sure, buddy. All right, so Doctor Boom into Doctor Boom, uh, pretty standard. I would say like the the player that played the first Doctor Boom usually has the advantage because he can dictate what trades to make here. Yeah, for sure. He can decide whether he wants to uh, be uh, the aggressive player or whether he wants to actually trade um, and be more defensive. All right, are we gonna play Boom Merry Go Round? I, I would actually like. Wow! I would actually like to see God if he's planning to play Godzilla this turn. I'd like to see that being played first. I he's playing High Main though. Yeah, High Main is uh, probably better here. Wow, Kalento got the much better exchange of uh, damage and stuff there. Yeah, the High Main's too good. Pass up. Yeah, I'm. I mean, with Godzilla, there are fireballs in your opponent's hands, but uh. I kind of would have liked to see Godzilla more, just because it's a more fun card, I'd say. Well, Monk, when there's sixty thousand dollars on the line and a Ferrari mm -hmm. uh, to be won, I think, I think now is not the time to to be messing around with Godzilla, mm -hmm. unless you're absolutely forced to. Now, if you're playing in a show match against other casters from a different region, fair, fair enough. I would say Garzo is like fun enough to find enough to play. Yes, I believe my only mistake in my match against the Chinese <laughs> caster was that I did not bring Gazrella to the yeah. to the deck to the tournament. Clutch does a few points off lethal, by the way. He's got the uh, he's got the uh, the fireball and the frost bolt. Mm -hmm. If you can just guarantee. That he won't die in the next couple turns and get some damage and he'd be good. Clunto's also calculating the chance that he might die, assuming his opponent has the kill command and leash to hounds. He knows one of the cards is a minion off web spinner, so that one could obviously be a wild card. Like if it's an extra damage with Stone Tusk Boar, if it's the uh, Dire Wolf Alpha. If it's a Kodo, that might be If it's be a stampeding Kodo one. to destroy and piss on his dreams. And okay. That is the damage necessary. He's missing that three damage short. Setting up lethal. Whoa. Uh, Owl is actually. It would have been good if. Uh, well, it's still good, but it yeah. would have been even better if uh, oh. the hunter player had lethal right Did now. Did he sequence that correctly? Uh oh. He should have played gar uh, the glaive Zuka first. Mm -hmm. Does he? Need it's okay. To, he's he... gonna he's gonna get it anyways on uh -huh. the one one, and then it'd be, it'd be all it'll be all sweet, man. <laughs> on the board uh, I don't think so but yeah there's pretty much no way for him to win at this point yeah that's unfortunate unfortunately Godzilla was not able to well, be played this is where you play Garzilla, Garzilla because you pretend like you weren't you wasn't sequencing him properly with the mm -hmm. Glazuka yeah exactly yeah I don't think like I don't think you're really scared of uh, this one two minion I mean it's not actually gonna make a difference so Godzilla uh, it does come on the field but Kalento doesn't even wince because he knows he doesn't have to deal with it. Yeah. This game's over. He can even uh, ping the Godzilla for maximum BM. Oh, he absolutely should. In fact, uh, he should add one Whirling Blade to Godzilla and then ping it. Of course. Make it 14 Come damage. on, Kalento. No. Miss BM. Almost as bad as Miss Lethal. All right. Series is even, man. We got 1-1 uh, one, one going into game three. Clento has Priest and Druid up against Paladin and Hunter. Pretty interesting mix of classes, but I would... I would... It's very interesting, right? Because Clento's Priest is very good mm -hmm. against both these classes, but I feel like Druid is pretty bad against both these classes, and I think that gives Green Memory the edge. Yeah, but again, Druid is a class that can take games off of anyone True. if you just draw that Wild Growth or Innervate, so... I think Kalento is still in a pretty good, pos good position. I mean, that Priest, uh, I don't know how well it will do against the the Hunter per se, but I think Priest is one of the classes. It doesn't have a lot of good matchups, but I do believe that Paladin is one of the better matchups um, that Priest does have. Yeah. With uh, Thought Steals, I mean, like, Thought Stealing and Aldor um, is just so great when you combine it with Cabal. Like, you can basically steal Tyrion with that. Especially if you have Pyromancer, uh, then all of a sudden those one ones aren't as big of a problem. It, it can be problematic if they have, you know, the Quartermaster plays and whatnot, or 
say in the very very late stages of the game and you're just drawing one card per turn mm -hmm. and your paladin stacking hero powers then yeah the paladin can definitely run away at that point but uh as, if, as long as Kalento has a pretty reasonably balanced control priest and you know plays very resource cost efficiently he should be favored in that match uh, and then, of course, if Priest can stand against the Hunter Pressure, it's going to be in a good spot. The question becomes, can Druid be able to stand up to the Paladin? Because we all know that Hunter is pretty good against Druid, mm -hmm. especially with Freezing Traps. Uh, how does it fare against Paladin, you feel? Because I always feel like the, the Paladin is a little bit better against Druid than the other way around. Yeah, I actually feel like it has a lot to do with how the decks are built. Um, I think faster Paladin decks tend to do a little better against faster uh uh, druid decks, whereas slower Paladin decks tend to uh, deal better with slower Druid uh, decks, gotcha. uh, such as S Stan Sifka's uh, kind of rampy Druid. And I think it's because Paladin is still the class that's not uh, usually the aggressive class. Uh, it's the class that has a lot of answers, so a faster Paladin has more and better answers to a faster Druid, whereas a slower Paladin has more and better answers to a slower Druid. But enough about Paladin versus Druid. This game we have, um, we have the Hunter versus the Druid from Kalento. Now, I want to point out that we've seen a lot of the same cards in this Hunter as the Hunter that we saw uh, from the other Chinese player, Ice Fox. So not, there might actually be like a Chinese list going around with this exact cards like Lep uh, Leprodones as their one drops and Glaive Zuka, as well as the standard Dr. Boom high main combo. Yeah. I mean, we do have deck build famous Hunter deck builders like uh, Nine Man and Cynix uh, in the Western scene, and, and most Hunter decks are copied off of them. So there might be just be an, like an equivalent in the Chinese scene, uh, a, a Chinese nine man, if you will. I'm actually curious about the Druid pick here because if Kalento feels like his best shot is to play Priest from this point onwards, I guess was he afraid of running into Hunter because he needs Priest against the Paladin? Because Hunter makes a lot of sense from uh, from Green Memory side, right? He doesn't want to lose matches unnecessarily. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, this Druid deck probably not going to fare too well against really strong pressure. He's got cards like um, the Pilot Shredder, which also gives Druid a generally a hard time. Mm -hmm. And you know what else he has? He has the uh, Harrison Jones, which is perfect here. Even Honestly, even a Sludge Vulture would be great. If Kalento is a bit more greedy and... He, uh, he wants to save that Harrison Jones for a stronger Eagle Horn bow, then that might be the answer. He also knows that um, this Chinese player is probably playing a similar deck to his uh, Chinese counterpart. And if, uh, if they're indeed using the same deck, he probably does have that Eagle Horn bow in his deck as well. Both 5 drops are very good in this situation, actually. Yeah, I think so. It also depends on what secrets you think would pop out, so... Uh, freezing Trap, right? Yeah. yeah. I saw, think we, we haven't seen double, a Snake Trap. Yeah, we saw a double Freezing Trap from the other Hunter, so... It stands to reason that double Freezing Trap uh, would, would be coming here. Wow. If Eagle Horn Bow is used now, he actually has to kill this Harrison Jones. Yep. That's pretty funny. Yeah. And if he kills the Harrison Jones, that means that Keeper is going to get bounced back. Right, and you can silence things, mm -hmm. especially for powerful cards like the High Main. Yeah, so this is, uh, again, another Sophie's Choice. Which one do you want to give to your opponent? And all Sophie. both are really bad. <laughs> oh, I don't think, don't be so dramatic. Jeez, you Sophie's to, Choice. You have to give up one of your children, <clears throat> basically. Did you actually read Sophie's Choice? I did not read Sophie's Choice, I'm sorry. I did not even watch the movie. I read the Wikipedia article. So that's the kind of person I Good am. Good enough, I guess. Um, so Innervate Dr. Boom. Of course. Can you deal with this, Hunter? Oh, man. Uh, not playing around my control tech. I would say pretty reasonable against the Hunter. Yeah, I mean, he's not five mana. The best he can do is draw. But this Boom Bot, what if he just snipes this Cult Master? Yeah, I guess Straight he... Up. Oh! Yeah, there he goes. Fortunately, he still gets the... Um, gets the card. Right. But probably not what... The we... Druid takes such a large initiative, because now Dr. Boom is hitting 7 per turn. Uh, he's got the Sludge Belcher to protect his life total. Mm -hmm. And he's like, even making up a little bit of ground by hero powering and adjusting for his life, so... Uh, Kalento is sitting in an awesome spot, and... 
He even played around explosive shot. Wow. Good I mean, fundamentals. I mean, uh, he, he might be aware of this player called Fake, who uses explosive shot in his hunter decks. At the Gfinity tournament, he actually brought a control hunter. Now, I'm not talking about mid-range hunter, which we see from the green memory right now. I'm talking about full-on control hunter with uh, spin weedles, snipers, and explosive shot. And uh, no kill commands, but plenty Mul of deadly -shot? shots. Not multi-shot, though. Uh, ran Arcane Shot, uh -huh. and uh, he actually ran Grazrilla. Wow. It's pretty impressive. Not as impressive as this game, though. Clento stomps the Hunter, and that was a very strong play, just from getting Wild Growth early on all the way to making sure he can get that Dr. Boom out. As you can tell, that is why they call him K-God, because he well, draws Wild Growth. <laughs> he draw Not only does he draw Wild Growth, but he draws Innervate, into Dr. Boom, so. That's right. Just after was everything. There, and and not only that, I feel like the strongest play that turn was actually, or that game was actually Keeper of the Grove on turn four into a knife juggler. Yeah. That's probably and, the and, most and the Harrison value. Jones was actually pretty big Exactly, too. exactly. So, Clancy just pretty much had really good turns every single turn. That's a really good point that Mewish talk about. The, the Harrison Jones drew, helped him draw into the Innervate, right? Which yeah. helped him get the Dr. Boom. Mm. So, if he went for a more passive play of Sludge Belcher, it could have ended up giving Hunter time to breathe enough for to play cards like high main, mm -hmm. and then Dr. Boom becomes less good. So that's a pretty big observation to make mm -hmm. that uh, allows Clento to win the game. What seems to be easy and straightforward, but mm -hmm. there's definitely a few decision trees that he could have gone elsewhere. Yeah, I think when Blizzard made the card Wild Growth, they were kind of thinking like this is how it would play out. Wild Growth, uh, um, it gave him a disadvantage on board from the first few turns. The Hunter was pretty much allowed two free turns in which he played Knife Juggler into Mad Scientist. Right. But Kalanto had just had more mana to deal with everything and more options. He wouldn't have been able to play the Keeper on turn four, which is a huge swing, um, but not enough to bring him back to the game or bring him uh, on par on the game. But mm -hmm. then he was able to play Harrison, which brought him even further ahead. And each turn, he was allowed to get just a little, a little more ahead until he was on par with the Hunter player and then mm -hmm. surpassed the Hunter player with the uh, Innervate draw as well. All right, so uh, we're going to game number three. Clento will be going back to Priest against Hunter or Paladin. Two classes where I think he's okay, honestly, facing off against. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's never a guaranteed thing against Hunter. Um, and it's never truly a guaranteed thing against Paladin. Sometimes Paladin's tempo can't be taken away from them. They have the god draw, but I, I'm liking Kalanto's chances here to advance in the round of eight. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it would be a, rather a shame if Kalanto didn't advance from this tournament. I mean, uh, he it was actually very difficult for him to get his visa. Um, he had to fly on very short notice, and to come here uh, among all his adoring Chinese fans and just lose in the first round and then have to just basically do nothing for the next three or four days, I would say... Probably what I would consider a disappointment. Well, uh, hold on. Hold, hold off on that assessment. Well, hold off on that assessment because this Hunter drew that pretty badly. That is a bad draw. Not a huge draw. Hey, does Admiral say anything when that, like, it's the opposite of a bad draw? Or about opposite of a huge draw? Um, I don't think he does right now, but uh, I'll definitely talk to him about that. He definitely needs uh, kind of the opposite catchphrase. He's, he's, his catchphrase is per cast. His... His CPC has been pr low pretty recently. I think he needs to step it up. I mean, I think uh, at the Gfinity tournament, I actually said Senor El Fuego more times than he did. Kind of disappointing there. He's losing his edge, man. It's the mm -hmm. beard. It's the source of his power. Yeah, I think he actually made a bet that he would shave off his beard, and then he realized that there's no way he could do that because it was like just his signature thing, right? Yeah. So uh, That's why he is the Dark Iron Door. They, they actually call him that in China as well. They call him of the Dark Iron? Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. I love China, man. Yeah. That is so funny. Well, speaking of Dark Iron Dwarf, there's actually a, a Chinese player, uh, Dong Zhong. You know him, right? Yeah. Um, so they actually call him the Sludge Belcher um, <laughs> because he's, he's a little big. And he also has a son yeah. who kind of looks like him. Oh, so, so they call him the Sludge? The, the Slime? Sl or the Sludge? Yeah, so he's the, like, his son is the Slime. And like... It's not it's like he's, we're man. making fun of him. He actually like really loves this he game. Embraces he it. embraces it fully. Good for him, man. Yeah. Oh man, the Shadow Madness value. Oh wait, no, there's a there's a freezing trap. Freezing yeah. trap. Still decent value, I'd say. Oh, Pyromancer. It's also pretty decent. A uh, Pyromancer, and then you can Shadow Madness in a future turn. I mean, Shadow Madness, you're always going to get value in this matchup. I would say slightly less these days, yeah. as opposed to when uh, uh, Hound Masters were being run. Right. Like, if you if you just Shadow Madness uh, a 3-4 Haunted Creeper, 
or a 3-3 web spinner, it's just so much value. Hmm. There's a lot of ways to play out this turn, Monk. What do you think? Okay, so you have five mana. I, I mean, definitely I definitely would like the Wild Power Mancer. Probably power the shield. Power Shield. Yeah. And then um, see what you draw. Maybe just heal. Yeah, I guess his rationale is okay, uh, he'd rather well. just build up the board. If he uses weapon, last weapon charge, he's fine with it. Mm -hmm. He's hoping here to um, just kind of force his opponent to deal with this Mad Scientist. Mm -hmm. um, even though Kalentos doesn't have enough secrets in his hand, the Mad Scientist is kind of threatening because it threatens to proc the Freezing Trap if nothing is done about it. And in order for uh, Green Memory to deal something about it, he needs either to play the Hunter's Mark or the Unleash the Hounds. And I'm not sure if either of those are exactly what you want to do in order to save a freezing right. trap. What do you really value more? The other thing is that... But the Cult Master. Yeah. And Hunter's, uh, Hunter's Mark. Okay. Yeah, the other thing is that he can't really... He, it's really difficult for him to use the bow even. Because if he does, he uh, gives up a charge of his bow as well. Yeah, this is, this is fine by me. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Ooh, he passes, then that frees up the, uh, the Shadow Madness to allow him to clear. Yep. Actually, there's a lot of ways you can do this turn again. Before, I thought it was pretty clear, but... Mm -hmm. No, I, can... I like the Shadow Madness. Shadow Madness? So you Shadow Madness the 1-1 one, one token. And you get a Wisp. But it costs 3, three. mana? Uh, 2 mana? 2 mana, 2 mana, I think. The Spectral Spiders are 0 mana? Three. Yeah, they're just like Wisps. But, oh, really? Uh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. See, Monk, Monk is the, uh, the Hearthstone Encyclopedia. I don't know about that. Maybe they're not Wisps. Maybe they cost Monk like 10 Monk is mana. Liquidpedia. Oh my god. Oh wow. All is right, that all confirmed? Right. I, 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 need, I need some facts to toss to Monk to test his knowledge. He, he has nothing in front of him other than a sheet of paper with the player's classes on it. Okay. But I'm pretty sure if anybody asks a random question from chat, Monk will know the answer to it. Really putting me on the spot here. But you know what? I, I, I accept the challenge. I 99% guarantee it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, the alternative play is to kill Command. This is, uh, he needs to stop the Hunter from drawing cards. So he needs to get rid of the Cult Master. Okay, that's interesting. I think I guess like he wants to save the Shadow Madness because he knows it's going to get value later on. Sure. Look at those Kalento plays. Kalento uh, is one of those players that he just plays so fast uh, at the very end of a turn. There's a lot of times where I see Kalento play and he's like, he just plays like 10 cards in a row right yep. when the rope is about to end. And because we see from the spectator mode, we're like, oh, uh, he, he actually didn't get the turn off. But, you know, we always trust Kalento. He's never actually roped into missing something. Unlike some other players. So, uh, uh <laughs> lol. Uh, if the game goes on longer, who, who becomes favorite monk, the priest or the hunter? The game goes on long. Um, I think it all really depends on how many cards each player has, and right now we see the priest player with a definitive advantage in that uh, with mm -hmm. in that regard. So, um, if that ga if the game goes on right now and the priest is still at 27 mana, I think definitively Kalento will be ahead. Sick. Stealing that mass time, this was so big. Mm -hmm. And if the game goes long, you also give the priest more opportunities to. Uh, Draw a lot of his combos. Yeah. And draw his uh, use his situational cards. Just yeah. set up more situations. For example, this cabal that we see. Um, also, he might uh -huh. draw into his circle for the wild pyromancer. Just again, l lots of things he could draw. Uh, I feel like that's his second lost tall strider. It is. Uh, he actually got one last game. Tall strider. Lost tall strider. That's a tongue twister, monk. It is. It is. The the lost. I keep saying last tall strider like it's some epic uh, like book or novel. The last that's samurai. Out. Well, I was thinking the last of the Mohicans, but yeah, the last samurai is definitely a more appropriate analogy. I mean, he is sitting so pretty right now. He's up in health, he's up in cards, and he's going to pretty soon be up on the board. I guess uh, the the only problem I have with Planto's position is that he has too much health right now, actually, and he can't combo his Light of the Naru plus heal himself. Oh, he can always use it uh, offensively. Yeah. With the uh, uh, Akunai. Of course, of course. I'm just uh, picking, it basically picking becomes straws. Lightning Bolt for one mana. I think that's what might be, what we might see right here. Double Light of the Naru. 
actually pretty hilarious how close he is to killing his opponent mm -hmm. uh, with cards like Lay of the Narun and Shadow of Madness. Oh. Oh, what an interesting card. Because so... now he used that and it pops up and does damage. And That's not only that, he, funny. he sets up Unleash the Hounds for his opponent. Oh! Wow. Wow. That is pretty funny. Unleash the Hounds is perfect. If he has a second Cult Master. Oh! I would say that's a huge then draw. Knife Jungler. And, and the uh, Unleash wow. the Hounds. Green Memory actually prays a bit to the Chinese gods before he put before he unleashes those the juggles. Hounds. First one is true. Second one is also true. Wow. Third one. And that's how you beat Kalento. Not I mean, only now he's got the lost tall strider. Yeah. Not not lost, only did uh, the lost tall strider. Sorry. Good, good job. Good job. Yeah. Not not only did he clear Holy his Nova. opponent's board. Here we go. Uh, but I was gonna say, not only did he clear his opponent's board, but each knife juggle hit the exact right minion in order. Like he cleared yeah. the first minion, One, then the two, second, three. then the third. Now this has to shoot the lost Hall Strider. Oh! <laughs> now that is sweet poetic justice. Wow, what a great knife juggler! Pretty much. That uh, was awesome. Four, four out of four. I don't know about you. Four out of four. Mm -hmm. Now, this is actually really interesting. I was saying before that Kalento was really ahead in uh, in cards, but yeah. right now we can see both players are top decking. And Circle of Healing is probably, it's, it's almost certainly the worst card you can have Unless, in this situation. Did he use both uh, Arcanines? Uh, only one Arcanine in this game. So if he gets both Arcanines. Oh, Thought Thought Steel. Steel. Oh! Nice. Good cards for Kalento. Those are great cards, actually. It contests his opponent's board so well. Wow, that's a, it's like it's actually so perfect because that Carnic Creeper contests everything. Mm hmm. Yeah, just overall, such great games today, but just everything going yeah. perfectly for both he players. He needs to trade everything in, right? Because otherwise he just picks up heals. Oh, okay. All right, we can do that. Okay. Oh! oh. Kalento. Oh, man. What's going to happen now? He drew uh, that combination. Uh. Oh! He gets the worst one off the Pilot Shredder. Uh, things is are there not anything going worse? well. Monk, is there actually anything worse than the novice engineer? Um, let's see. Maybe something like uh, something like Lore Walker Cho, perhaps. Man, Lore Walker Cho. If you got Lore Walker Cho, then yeah. you wouldn't be able to play like Unleash the Hounds or Hunter's Mark to come back. Yeah. So like now he trades into it because uh, out of necessity, but I feel like that three five did a lot of work. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so much health has been uh, rubber banded by that. What? Well, well uh, Clento now gets a free knife juggler. Yep. Not bad. I mean, I think you'd pass. Oh, I think that's a small sequence error. Actually, you should have attacked with the the slime. Clento made a mistake. Oh, no. Ah! Well, what no, will his god status be now in China? They well, gave him a visa, but will they keep his divinity? Well, it's not a mistake, actually. If you attack with the slime, then you don't get knife shot black back, right? Oh, wait, you're yeah. right. I'm such an idiot. So, so hunt, um, kill command on the... Uh, Lol, okay, never mind. On the knife juggler, but yeah, this hunter player knows it's over. Lethal on the board. I pulled the cord down in frustration of how stupid I am, Monk. <laughs> See, Monk, that's why you're the Liquipedia. Kalento's gonna advance 3-1.